Colorado inspires. Many travel far and wide to marvel at its beauty. For some of us, it's the place we call home. Within most Colorado communities, immigrants live, work, and play, contributing to the everyday success of Colorado. But adapting to life in an unfamiliar community is not easy for any newcomer. Nor is it easy for established residents to adjust to neighbors with unfamiliar customs and languages. This is the two-way challenge of immigrant integration, which aims to build stronger communities rooted in our diversity. Ten years ago, immigrant integration was a relatively new concept. Today, it has become a movement, embraced by communities across the country, supported by scores of foundations, local governments, and nonprofit organizations. Since 2004, 19 communities across Colorado have pioneered the work of immigrant integration, weaving immigrants and refugees into the fabric of their towns and cities. They were supported by the Colorado Trust, which invested in immigrant integration as part of an 11-year, $18 million commitment called SURFI, the Supporting Immigrant and Refugee Families Initiative. The Spring Institute for Intercultural Learning served as the coordinating agency for SURFI. Susan Downs Carcos was the original program officer at the Colorado Trust, who spearheaded this initiative, and now continues her work as a director of integration strategies at Spring. Well, we've talked about immigrant integration in terms of the adaptation process that a newcomer family goes through when coming to a new community, learning how to navigate the schools, for instance, or how to speak the language, um, making sure that they're able to get a job and succeed in that job. But we also talk about immigrant in integration in terms of the broader community as well. Uh, so that they understand um, the cultures of the people who are coming to their community, have an opportunity to build relationships and get to know them better, and find ways to work together on issues of mutual interest. The Colorado Trust really became excited about this concept of immigrant integration, recognizing that for newcomers to really become part of the fabric of their communities and for communities to really make the most of the many talents that immigrants brought with them, um, that immigrant integration needed to be seen as a two-way street. Newcomers arrive here from all over the world, adding cultural richness to our population, a variety of talents, and a strong work ethic. One in every 10 persons living in Colorado in 2010 was born outside the United States. The foreign-born population of Colorado has more than tripled over the last 20 years, while only doubling nationally in that time. Many immigrants and refugees faced extreme circumstances in their home countries and experienced a rough road getting to the U.S. But their hopes and dreams for themselves and their children are remarkably similar to that of the receiving community. We are too high in the wood, live in the dark. We didn't not even allow to turn the lights on because if we do, they throw bombs out to our house. Some of them, my friend died, and so I decided to, to come to the United States. When we crossed the border, and um, we were robbed by the gangs. And my dad was saying, no, I want you to just escape and be the, the survivor of the family because we are not going to survive. They're going to kill us, so don't make them kill all of us. After enduring a decade in a Senegalese refugee camp, Dauda received asylum in the United States in 2004 and became a citizen in 2010. And there is a saying in English, there is no place like home. And uh, as a human being, I have the right for peace, education, love. And I lost this peace and I went somewhere else to find this peace. And it happened to be United States. I want to thank all my friends and people who helped me to all the way through this journey. All those friends from Steamboat, refugee camps in Chilon, Dakar, Silverton, Steamboat, and Denver now. I want to thank all the friends that I met in those places, and I want to thank them. 
Immigrants and refugees often arrive in one part of Colorado and migrate to another, depending on economic opportunity and clusters of their countrymen. Most settle along the Front Range, but many locales across Colorado have seen significant increases in the numbers of immigrants and refugees. Summit County, for example, was designated a new Ellis Island by the Center for Immigration Studies for its over 700% growth in foreign-born population between 1990 and 2000. Other mountain communities also attracted newcomers to fill job vacancies in ski resorts, hotels, and other service industries. Similarly, employer needs have attracted immigrants and refugees to the meatpacking plants in Morgan County and Greeley, as well as agriculture work from Montrose to Alamosa. Receiving communities experience both the benefits and strains of this economic migration. Immigrants and refugees must adapt to a new culture with or without help. They often face language barriers, discrimination, and challenges with everything from affordable housing to health care. This is where programs of immigrant integration come in, a role SURFI has been playing for the last decade. Professionals in the emerging field of immigrant integration often talk about the pathways to integration. Following these pathways, the SURFI grantees developed multifaceted programs, each contributing to the gem of a vibrant community. The most common program type across the SURFI sites is the Immigrant Resource Centers that provide information, referrals, and cross-cultural trainings to both newcomers and service providers. Perhaps the most pervasive need supported statewide by these resource centers is community referrals and strategic additions to English as a second language programs. Another important facet of the immigrant integration is supporting immigrants and refugees along the path to citizenship. This includes informational workshops, consultations with immigration attorneys and paralegals, preparation for the U.S. citizenship test, and voter registration support. In 2009, the Littleton Immigrant Resource Center won one of the four National E. Pluribus Unum Awards from the Migration Policy Institute for their innovative one-on-one -on -one approach to citizenship training between immigrants and receiving community volunteers. The LIRC went on to become the first city program in the country to be accredited by the U.S. Board of Immigration Appeals to provide paralegal assistance to immigrants moving along the pathway to citizenship. Getting to know your neighbors and building relationships that span race and culture is at the core of immigrant integration. Many SURFI grantees held events that brought the community together in cross-cultural celebration and in-depth dialogue. What better way to enjoy cultural diversity than through food, music, and dance? Facilitated dialogues between immigrants and established residents have provided a safe space to hear each other's stories. Eyes are opened as barriers melt away. Participants have ranged from undocumented immigrants to Minutemen who get to know one another as individuals rather than statistics. Documentary films followed by discussion have also been used to promote understanding. Starting in 2007, the Boulder Surfy grantee partnered with the University of Colorado to host dialogues between immigrant workers and students at CU. This enabled them to build heartfelt connections and raise awareness of immigrant issues. Taken together, these facets and more form a brightly shining gem of immigrant integration. And the ripple effects of Colorado's pioneering work have been felt across the country. I think SURFI has had a tremendous impact in Colorado as well as around the country. In Colorado, there are many, many new activities that are underway because of SURFI that really focus on immigrant integration. We also have a huge number of new champions who've stepped forward to be a positive voice for immigrant integration, and those are champions of 
all different backgrounds. And then finally, there are an array of new partnerships that have been developed, partnerships between immigrant serving organizations and mainstream organizations and immigrants who live in those communities and receiving com community members who live in those communities. Uh, we're seeing people working together in new ways to promote immigrant integration into the long term for Colorado. Much of the work started by SURFI communities is being sustained in various ways. In many cases, the organizations and personnel funded by SURFI are continuing their work in immigrant integration. In others, local governments and other nonprofits have stepped up to absorb central aspects of the programs. New collaborations and partnerships have developed to enable the work to progress in new forms. The state and some nonprofits have established positions focused on refugee and immigrant integration. In the end, the test of sustainability is not about the survival of a particular organization. It's whether mainstream institutions are adapting to the special needs of incoming populations and community find ways to embrace all of their members. Beyond institutions, it all comes down to caring people committed to the cause of community. Meg Allen, director of the Denver Coalition for Integration, is a lot like her fellow coordinators from other SURFI sites. For all of them, it's more than just a job. So this is the family that I started working with. Um, this is Madhu, this is Chali, this is Deva. Mm -hmm. Deva is Chali's mother, and um, Madhu and Chali are married, and they have three children. This is my sister. <laughs> um, it's completely and cha totally changed my life, um, without a doubt. And um, I feel a great sense of responsibility to make them feel welcome and to get them acclimated. Um, it's been just a real blessing. Refugees and immigrants themselves, grateful for what they have received, are now active in so many of the SURFI communities, volunteering and giving back. Guatemalan immigrant Francisco Lucas sits on the board of the San Luis Valley Immigrant Resource Center. Mexican immigrants in Leadville decided collectively to volunteer at the local senior center. Dalda Sol has become an impassionate spokesperson for integration. Me, we have a lot of people who are here to help, and we need to integrate ourselves to the community. We cannot succeed in the United States and saying that I cannot speak English. English is a spoken language in the United States. I encourage them to learn English by even learning one word a day. After the end of your home in word you got, it's a lot. Don't ever say it's not possible. There is, else, there is always a possibility. It's hard work, but it's still doable. That's what I want to tell all my immigrant friends. And people who work for integrating, helping us, I really recognize that and I want to say thank to all those organizations. When we welcome the stranger, we are strangers no more. Helping each other helps us all. We cannot do it alone. <laughs> <laughs>